putting up barriers. We sent, we sent our final draft contract back to sign. Not we and we're not getting back to anyone. You know, we talk about arbitration. They want to appoint, appoint their partner as an arbitrator. That sort of stuff doesn't work. Then we get another one on Wednesday. Tyson Fury says, "We're telling you now, the fight is off unless you sign on Wednesday." I said, "It's impossible." That deadline passed. I've not heard back from from George Warren since Wednesday. So as far as we're concerned, the fight off doesn't work. Then we get another one on Wednesday. Tyson Fury says, "We're telling you now, the fight is off unless you sign on Wednesday." I said, "It's impossible." That deadline passed. I've not heard back from from George Warren since Wednesday. So as far as we're concerned, the fight's off. Wow. I mean, we're happy to continue the discussions. We haven't had any of those discussions. Um, again. No bad words to say about um, George Warren anyway, and I've, I've seen some of Frank Warren's comments, but at the end of the day, you know, you've got a guy putting in deadlines, telling us the fight's off. You know, at the, at the weekend, or Friday, Derek Chisora received the contract for the Tyson Fury fight. So I love a fighter. So in our mind, Chisora received the contract for the Tyson Fury fight. So I love a fighter. So in our mind, he put us the fight's off. You know, at the, at the weekend, or Friday, Derek Chisora received the contract. For the Tyson Fury fight. So I love a fighter. So in our mind, he's not fighting Anthony Joshua. We're more than happy to continue those conversations. But what we've been told is the deadline has passed. Wow. And so have the entire country, by the way. So you know, don't don't necessarily blame Anthony Joshua for Tyson Fury pulling the plug twice on this fight. We have sent the final version of the contract back. They've come back with with points, and we were told that the fight's off by, by the man himself. AJ's training. He's still ready for that day, and we'll see what happens. So Bob's saying like, what have you got? Ooh, what's good, family? It's your man, OYB, back once again. So we just heard there from your mans, Eddie, fast car, Eddie. I've got a moody diesel. <laughs> I've got, a, I've got a moody diesel. End of the day, man, Eddie. He waffling. How about that? Never mind. What, never mind. Eddie's moody gear. He got to sell you. Yeah. Listen, Eddie. I'm sick to death of the moody. Listen. I'm listen. Listen, Eddie. Yeah. I'm sick to death of the moody clobber. You're always trying to sell us. Yeah, just because you're from Essex don't mean you got to constantly be on the hustle. Yeah, moody clobber selling ass. And no one's trying to buy your moody looking ass gear. Do you hear me, Mr. Hearn? No one's trying to buy it. Anyway, listen. We just heard that from Eddie, Mr. Fast Car. Once again, trying to move on. He's moody clobber. Yeah, no one wants it. And no one's trying to buy the moody gear you're trying to pass on, Eddie. Yeah, and no one trying, and no one buying the moody clobber you're waffling on about. That said, at this point in time, your man that I be is well and truly broken. Yeah, I've, honestly, I've never in all these years I've been doing this game. Yeah, two, three, four years, really, nearly five, really, actually five and a half years. The five and a half years the YB been doing this, this commentary thing. Yeah, this leaked news thing. I've never once been completely dumbfounded, truth be known. And that is the case today, I feel. Now, obviously, I've got my hunch of what's going on. And I'm going to explain that in this video. But I'm, what I'm getting at is, I'm completely, bam, my head's frazzled. I don't know who to believe. I just don't know who to believe. I, I don't if, I, if anyone who stands there and tells you that you know exactly what's going on, is a complete liar. Obviously, my whole bias goes back to the fact that I still believe AJ is desperate for this fight. I'm sorry. I can't believe under normal circumstances AJ would have turned this down. Yeah? People say, oh, Team AJ didn't want another loss. Listen, Team AJ, if Team AJ were worried about another loss, they wouldn't have gone into the Usyk rematch, for example, losing to a midget. That's the worst thing in, that's the worst thing possible to lose back to back to a midget gem. AJ team got no shame about losing. So I'm sorry. That's the sticker for me. If it comes out I'm wrong. If it turns out that AJ was actually scared. So be it. I'll take the L. But for me I can't get over the fact that. I know for a fact AJ's got no shame. And he can't wait to be paid maximum money. money to, for people to have a go on him. People keep saying oh why be Gareth A Davis. Biggest turncoat. Gareth A Davis yeah put a video out. Airing Eddie Hearn out. Oh it's Eddie. Eddie's trying to protect Anthony Johnston. Anthony lost you from losing again. That's interesting. 
Eddie's doing something he hasn't done for God knows how long. If, if, if Eddie Hearn was worried about AJ losing again, why did he serve him up to Andy Ruiz that first time? Yeah? Why did he serve him up to Usyk? They could have dropped the belt. Oops. Do you understand? There's many things Team AJ could have done over the years to protect him not losing. And now he's lost a whole bunch of times. Team AJ, in my opinion, are categorically on a money. They're trying to squeeze as much money as possible out of the game. For all they know, people keep saying, hey, Gareth A. Davis, oh, Eddie Hearn wants to protect AJ because he might lose it again. Listen, Gareth, for all we know, AJ is going to lose to Hergovic. Oops. So that whole argument of our oh, team AJ don't want to lose again, for all we know, he's going to fight some lesser person, get paid a tenth of what he'd get paid to fight Tyson Fury and lose anyway. Where does where does AJ end up then, yeah? But in reality, all that's on the headlines for AJ, on the cards for AJ, is a whole bunch of 50-50 fights. Who here believes AJ washes Zhang? Who here believes AJ washes Hergovic? Who here believes AJ washes Joyce? Who here believes AJ washes Dubois? No one. They're all fit. Well, Joyce is a 90-10 fighter, but for the main, all the prospect fights here that get AJ back into world championship position are at best 50-50 fights. So... The whole narrative of Team AJ trying to protect Eddie, trying to protect him, I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's not as if you can say, "Well, I be by avoiding Tyson Fury, they've got this route, they've got this magical route that's going to pay them loads of money." There's not. There's no easy money in this game right now. This is not. AJ would be a lot better off losing to Tyson Fury, getting guaranteeing that big weight of cash, and then going on to lose some more. Because on a serious note, yeah, if AJ AJ in the next year could easily lose three times in a row, again, another three, easily could happen. Lose to Zhang, lose to Hergovic, lose to, to Dubois. There you go, three in a row. At which point, it's going to be almost impossible for the Fury fight to happen at that point. And even if it does, there's no way AJ will be getting 40% again. Do you understand? Another, another point there for me. The fact Tyson Fury offered 40%, there's just no way, in my opinion... Team AJ, we're going to turn their nose up at that. They chewed his hand off. Now, that doesn't mean they become reckless. That doesn't mean just because AJ is desperate to get his booty popped again by Tyson Fury for a whole bunch of cash. That, that, what some of you man are confusing is, oh, why be? Well, if he was desperate, then why didn't he sign? Listen, you can be desperate for something, but still, processes have to be in place. AJ has obligations and liabilities. He can be desperate. Two things can be true. He can be desperate for the fight. Equally, a contract can't get done in record time. Ben versus Eubank took three months to negotiate, for example. Do you understand? I'm not saying they needed three months, but I've already explained to you, man. Show me the precedent. Show me where it's happened before, where a big fight like this has been done in two weeks. There, is, there isn't one. Which tells me it's not... This is not that simple. If it were, listen, if it was that simple for these big fights to get done in a week or two, you'd be able to tell me a whole bunch of examples. Look at Fury vs. Dillian White. That took about three months. The whole, even Fury vs. Wilder. The third fight took about ten years. And they'd already dealt with each other for God knows how long. Yeah? And even the first fight, at the time, it was all back and forth and whatever else. Even that, and both people were agreeing, it took about a month to go from first rumours to sort it out now this fight where we know there's deep complexities i.e. BT the zone and whatever else and AJ having recently signed lifetime deals that creates deep complexities which take time so it, that, listen no one from team AJ was saying it can't happen and again for me it's the whole thing of if team AJ didn't want this yet they could have said that they could have said sorry unreasonable December 3rd and no one could call it a duck because December 3rd is ridiculous. Two months since his... So two or three months since his last fight. They were desperate for this fight. That said, on the other side of things, the reason I tell you that I'm completely confused is the fact that Team Fury and Frank Warren said, oh, they had a finished contract and all. Fury said, oh, they've got a finished contract and Team Fury, Team AJ just didn't sign it. 
Also since then, we've had Gareth, Gareth A. Davis come along and say he spoke to people close to the situation who were basically saying Eddie Hearn's been stolen. Now, I did say in my last video, it was a bit odd. Eddie Hearn came out and said, oh, we're happy to fight December 17th. In fact, he even reiterated that today. We can fight December 17th, which was a little bit odd for me. And I kind of theorised, is it possible Team AJ are trying to push for the latter date, trying to bluff towards the latter date? I just don't know. Or is it possible that Team AJ have concluded, you know what, we're either going to do December 17th or not at all. We're going to try and delay this for December 17th or if or not at all, but on the bottom line. And it's looking like not at all. But ultimately here for me, uh, if Team Tyson Fury wanted this fight, why does Tyson Fury keep coming with all the deadlines? Bearing in mind, people, you have to admit, even the biggest Fury man fans, yeah, explain why your man keeps coming with a deadline when his own team aren't on that. Do you understand? Not one point throughout this process yet has the people actually working on the deal come out and said, yeah, the other side's being unreasonable. We haven't heard from George Warren. Frank Warren's just a shill sellout. Let's be real now. Frank Warren is doing whatever he can to suck Tyson Fury off. If Tyson Fury said jump, if Tyson Fury said the sky was blue, or orange, sorry, Frank Warren would go on a TalkSport interview and say, yeah, the sky's orange. And Frank Warren, George Warren, sorry, behind closed doors, has been cracking on. It was George Warren who said, ask Tyson Fury for an extension. So wait a minute, why is, if Team AJ are playing games, why, is, why did Frank Warren and George Warren have to request a, an increase in time? from Tyson Fury that tells you that Team Fury aren't really on board with the games he's playing not to mention we now hear some new information Derek Chisora's got an offer we know Manuel Char the whole Manuel Char thing's been weird so again I have to say this when you look at take a step back here and look at the information we have it all for me looks against Fury and as much as all, all of his actions Ham, what has Tyson Fury done since he, don't forget us old people, he's the one who mentioned this whole bullshit fight. I didn't even want to see the bullshit fight. But since he brought it to our attention and claimed he wanted it, why hasn't he continued with those actions, i.e. in it, well, throughout any transaction in life, there's things you can do to help it happen or prevent it happening. You tell me what actions Fury has done. Now I give him credit, 60-40. That's a plus. But that was in the first few days. So taking out the first few days. Well since that. Since really Fury offering 60-40. Which team AJ agreed. That part's all done. The initial term sheet is done. But from that point. What's Tyson Fury done that tells you. You know what. He want this fight. He's desperate for this fight. He's trying to make this fight happen. For example. The December 3rd date. Now at the time. I agree, Tyson Fury is the A-side. If he wants December 3rd, it's a bit awkward for AJ, but whatever. I stood by that. But again, even that itself, taking a step back, why is Fury adamant on December 3rd when they had December 17th book? What? Why not two weeks later, for what it's worth? Do you understand? What difference does that make? That in, that in itself, in my opinion, to at least a small extent, is Tyson Fury being a bit... Well, number one, it's, people could speculate that it's him trying to be awkward. But at the very least, it's something he's not trying to make the fight happen. He could have come out and said, you know what, if you want 717th, for what it's worth, it gives me more time. Bear in mind, people, Fury's the one saying, oh, I can't wait no longer. I can't wait no longer. I need to know who I'm fighting next. If that's the case, make December 17th, knowing historically how long things take to get done. Also bear in mind, Tyson Fury came out shortly after Offering, or shortly after Team AJ agreed to 60-40, Fury came out and went on a 10-day sabbatical. Oh, I'm with the Royal, oh, my name's Tyson Fury, I'm Team Royal Family, and I'm taking 10 days off to mourn the Queen. Fine, but equally, you took 10 days off, and then come back. And most people are overlooking that. Most people say, oh, AJ's had it for three weeks. No, 
both teams came out and said we haven't thought for 10 days so it's not it's not if you actually do the maths it can't be more than about 17 days in total Eddie Hearn also says that Team Fury didn't even send the initial contract out took them 8 days which Frank Warren agreed and said yeah And I, Frank Warren said it takes that long to draft a contract naturally I agree with that but it, it, it all works both ways Team AJ aren't the ones saying or being unreasonable with time let's do a bit of thinking here people if Team Frank Warren agree it took them 8 days to get a contract together to send to AJ why is everyone fussing and trying to that shows the, the magnitude of this event took them 8 days took them 8 days to get a contract out there now anyone who knows anything about business would know there was 0% chance of Team AJ to sign in the first thing that Frank Warren sent that's not how it works in fact I'd bet on even the 5th time the 5th form the 5th draft that went back is highly unlikely to be signed these things go back and forth they sit on zoom calls or they sit in meetings working through line by line it takes time that's all it does and throughout this process Fury limited the time with December 3rd fine but then what's happened since then December 3rd meant the lip, the, a shorter time to the fight the seven, listen December 17th was already booked as well that's a bit of an odd thing wait there you've already got December 17th booked but Fury's adamant in fact Fury even tried to go with November someone explained to me it's not like you can say well YB Fury wants to go before Christmas I get that if AJ is pushing for after Christmas I completely understand Fury's the A-side Fury's a family man he don't want to be fighting after Christmas fine but 717th satisfies everything for everyone I'd have thought gives them more time to get the negotiations done properly get the contract done properly and no rush especially when people you consider what are the alternatives for Fury it's not like honestly yeah I'd be the one saying yeah man Fury I'd be 100% agreeing with what Fury's done here if for example he was trying to line up a Joe Joyce fight if Tyson Fury was saying AJ I ain't got time to piddle about with you I'm trying to fight Joe Joyce I'll be the first man to say you know what man big man ting Fury's trying to do Fury's trying to make a legacy play here he don't have time to play touch but in the park with Ido Portal and Anthony Johnston but guess what the alternative so wait a minute Fury's rushing AJ for what what greater purpose is Fury rushing AJ for Manuel Char what the I don't even I was the first man to say more or less the only man to say I don't even want to see the AJ fight because he does nothing for the sport AJ don't does nothing he brings nothing to the sport he don't bring no heart he don't bring the top level of skill he brings nothing in my opinion he doesn't bring a winning resume he can't, right there you can't even beat a midget how the fuck you how, if you can't beat a midget how are you going to convince me you're going to beat Tyson Fury he didn't I didn't even want to see it however as much as I didn't want to see the, the AJ fight come on now let's talk turkey Fury versus Char what the fuck where, they, where does Fury honestly Fury's one of them guys yeah he finds random ass I've never seen a, a champion to find the random ass the most random ass this dudes manual rocking char oh my god where did he get these where did he, where did he find that guy from Jesus manual rocking do you know what I'm saying it sounds to me like Tyson Fury has been talking to KSI's manager and you know what I mean KSI's <laughs> KSI's fight manager is the guy Tyson Fury's been working with find the biggest bumps yeah the fuck and ironically enough Tyson Fury comes out much like KSI and starts saying yeah I'm going to fight two people in one night 100% the conspiracy is exposed Tyson Fury has been working with KSI's fighting agent unbelievable Cha we hear Chizora gets another contract so if Chizora's got a contract all in the meanwhile people Fury's supposed to be or Team Fury's supposed to be working with Team AJ again why is so Fury's rushed AJ for December 3rd to fight Char instead who again how's that helping a situation 
How's that helping anything? What's that doing? Fury said he wanted the AJ fight. Why not let the process play itself out? Like Eddie Hearn said, I do have to agree. This fight sells in one minute. And I'm not being funny, yeah? Given how crap, fair enough, yeah? I understand. If Fury was having a proper fight against Joe Joyce, he can argue this fight needs its due to build. We need eight weeks to build this fight. But for Char, for Fury versus Char, that fight can be put on with two weeks notice. You know what I'm saying? Two weeks notice that fight can have. It's not a blockbuster. It's a random ass fight. And no and no one care about that fight. Yeah? So if Fury and Team AJ and Team Fury could carry on for the next two weeks, that would still leave six weeks until six, seven weeks until December third. Or another two weeks for December seventeenth. Now, what I'd, if I was Tyson Fury, if I was advising Tyson Fury, I'd have called up Eddie Hearn and said, listen, Eddie, before I, before Tyson Fury made yeah, his first deadline, he should have told Frank Warren to sit down with Eddie Hearn and tell him, listen, Eddie, we want to make sure this fight gets done. Fury's, Tyson's got a, got a twitchy ass. He wants to make sure his fight's locked in. You tell us how long you think it will take. We're going to give you our full cooperation. And we want you to come out publicly on the record of a date this fight can get done by. Obviously a realistic date. Because to be fair, let's not forget people, both people are in the same boat here. AJ is in the same boat in terms of the uncertainty. He's arguably worse off as well because he's just washed up. If anyone can, who, if anyone doesn't need notice, it's Tyson Fury compared to AJ. Tyson Fury should have got sat down with Eddie Hearn and publicly agreed on a date. Now, if that if Team AJ have agreed on a date, let's say the middle of October, and then they're the ones nagging after that, both sides agreed, it's all public, we all know what time it is. But you can't just pick a date out of the air and pick a random ass date which has never been done before. In the history of boxing contracts, a fight of this size has categorically never been done in two weeks. So why make a deadline? What made Tyson Fury believe a fight of this magnitude? What information is he going on? Why would AJ be the first person to, to sign a fight? To not even sign a fight. There wasn't a real... There, people don't understand this. There wasn't a real contract. From what I understand, Team Fury don't have a fully fledged final written thing to sign. That's not the case. They're going back and forth. And that's why... Listen, if there was, yeah... If there was a final form contract, George Warren and Frank Warren wouldn't have been on talk. Frank Warren was on talk sport saying, yeah, we went to Fury and asked him for a few more days. What? A few more days for what? Does, ta- does AJ have the final form contract or not? If AJ has the final form, con- form contract, there's no need for more extension, is there? They have it and they've just chosen not to sign. There's no need for more more time. More time only makes sense... If both teams are going through the process that always takes time and, and getting to it. Fury want to do deadline. Fury want to do whatever else. And then Eddie Hearn also drops a bombshell that he hasn't heard from George Warren since the last deadline, which was Wednesday, Thursday last week. Wednesday, Thursday last week, George Warren stopped replying. That's where Eddie Hearn ends up. So as far as I'm concerned, now Team AJ have said they're still, that's the thing, Team AJ have said, whilst the fight's off in their mind, which for all intents and purposes it is, they're still open to communication, which makes sense. Well, Eddie, people say, oh, Eddie Hearn's cancelled the fight, it's off. No, Eddie Hearn is telling you what's 99% likely, because, I'm not being funny, it's almost Tuesday now, Eddie Hearn hasn't heard from Frank Warren for the best part of a week. How can it not be off, you know what I'm saying? How can it not be off? What's Eddie Hearn supposed to do? Come on in and say, yeah, it's still on. Well, even though I haven't heard from the guy for a week. Of course it's off. It seems to be Tyson Fury's got his wish and his final deadline has been realised. And my whole thing is, what for? Now, the only reason I started the video saying I'm completely confused and I'm not sure what to believe is because, like I said, you've got Gareth A. Davis, who really is a turncoat. Gareth A. Davis, oh yeah, the fight's... Oh, Eddie Hearn's ducked the fight. 
I've got good sources that Eddie Hearn's pulled out of the fight. And then you've got Eddie Hearn saying he hasn't heard from George Warren for six days. We need clarity on this. And I do have to say, again, the reason I'm on the fence is because... Normally, Frank Warren comes... Normally, it's back and forth. Eddie Hearn says one thing. We haven't heard for six days. Frank Warren then's come back with something else. That makes... That also, that equally makes sense. If you get what I'm saying. So I'm kind of sitting there now. What do you believe? On TalkSport tomorrow, I guarantee Frank Warren will be saying something else. And really, in conclusion, all I can say is... I didn't want this shit fight anyway, truth be known. This fight has sucked anyway. And it just sucks even more now. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to push the narrative that oh, AJ shit his pants. AJ loves... Shit his pants for what? He loves to lose. Yeah? For someone to shit their pants, they have to be scared of something. And Gareth A. Davis did say, oh, well, it can't be Tyson Fury. Why would he be scared for? Listen, my whole answer to that is... Tyson Fury is weird. Yeah? And the ultimate ether to that argument, oh, it can't be Tyson Fury, the problem, because why would he be scared of washed up AJ? True, but the same thing can be said. Why did Tyson Fury try to drag Deontay Wilder through court for 18 months to avoid that third fight? Why did he do it? The fight should have been easy. Either way we look at it, Tyson Fury did it. Tyson Fury tried to duck his obligations. For whatever reason. This guy isn't logical. This guy isn't rational. Rationally, he could have jumped in there in July 2020 and washed the guy. Instead, he stretched it out for 18 months and didn't fight Wilder until October 2021. Yeah? So don't say it, sit there and say, oh, it's not as, oh, Fury wouldn't be scared of. It's not, I'm not sure what it's about. All I know is, when Fury don't want to do something, he don't do it. Bottom line. Or he tries his best not to do it. Fury spent God knows how much in court trying to avoid his obligation, which he, which he ended up having to fulfil anyway. Do you understand? So you can't sit there and use logical arguments like, oh, it can't be Fury, why would he be scared of, why would he lie about wanting to fight AJ? But I did say from the start, for me, the whole 60-40 thing from Fury, it stank to me. It didn't smell good. Because for me, someone, if Fury genuinely wanted to fight AJ, why would Fury, we know Fury loves money. We know Fury loves money. We know Fury is super tight. Yeah? For example, before, when AJ had all the belts, yeah? When AJ had all the belts, AJ was on top. Fury had no belts before the first Wilder fight. Or oh, sorry, after the first Wilder fight. Fury had no belts. AJ offered Fury 60-40, and Fury said no, 50-50. So Fury, who was the B-side at then, was demanding 50-50 for himself. So now you've got Fury with all the upside himself. He's the champion, and he's prepared to give AJ only 10% less. Do you understand? Fury was making a big fuss when he had no belts and he had a draw with Wilder. Fury made a big fuss to demand 50% for himself against AJ. But now you want me to believe, now Fury's on top. We're supposed to believe that Fury was happy to give AJ 40%. I don't believe it. I believe, from if I was to bet right now, I believe Fury used it as a ploy. That was part of the ploy for him. I'll make it convincing. Yeah? Let's not forget, people. If Fury had said 5%, which really is close which really for me is closer to fair value but if he'd have said that and then pulled out doing this deadline rubbish then it looked really bad but a lot of the people say oh well, i'd be fury of course he wanted to fight that's why he offered 40 percent i actually think fury offering 40 percent implies it was all fake news from the jump that there for me is too good to be true we know for a fact AJ's value with no belts, a whole bunch of losses. How can he be 40%? He brings nothing to the table. You know what I'm saying? He just don't. If AJ don't bring nothing to the table. No recent wins, whole bunch of losses, no belts. That's not a 40% offer. You'd think at least, you'd think 30 would be pushing it as well. 30, 25. Mandatory challengers get 20, 25%. You ain't that. AJ isn't a mandatory challenger. AJ needs to beat Andy Ruiz. 
or Deontay Wilder to become WBC mandatory challenger. So go and do that if you want 25%. Like I said, that's a mandatory challenger. For AJ to be a voluntary, he's looking at no more than the mandatory. And that adjusts for his value. People who earn the shot by fighting decent fights, they get 20, 25%. And that's where AJ's value really, really lies. Fury for me, he bluffed. He put it out there too big to suck it in. And I'm sorry, but his actions ever since then really have been to not make the fight happen. The day, insisting on the day, we let that pass. Then we start hearing about deadlines. They're unrealistic, completely unrealistic, completely unrealistic deadlines. There is no final contract to sign. But yet Fury is insisting it be signed when there ain't nothing to sign. And if I'm wrong, if Team Frank Warren come out and say, we had a final form contract and Team AJ didn't sign it, that's fair enough. That's not what I understand. I understand the um, negotiations were, were, were continuing as they would do. The legal language was being written out. There was no final document to sign. So if there is no final document to sign, if we can agree that now, yeah, there was no final document to sign. Why is Tyson Fury banging on about signing? Something that doesn't exist. And if it does, Team Fury need to say that. Team Fury need to say, listen, on the 2nd of October 2022, at 4pm, we sent... Team AJ, the final form contract. They've had the final form contract for 72 hours. And we haven't heard back from them since. That's a statement we need to hear from Team Fury. If we hear that, then boom. We know Team AJ have shit their pants. Instead, so far, we've got Team AJ saying, Derek Chisora's got offers. And we haven't heard from Frank Warren for six days. Someone explain that. Clearly, Team Fury have decided to pull the plug. The question is, why? They don't want to fight. They're going on their own direction. Which is fine, but don't bring... Don't. I mean, let's be real now. Did Tyson Fury not know this fight would take time to negotiate? No, it's not even negotiate. We're, not talk, we're talking about... Um, working out the legal bullshit. Did he think that was going to get done in record time? I don't know. Two twos, though, we do know... Fury's desperate to fight a bum fight no one wants to watch. And for what it's worth, Fury might as well have given this more time, in my opinion. But really, it uncovers his his agenda. His agenda is he wants to fight a bum in Manuel Char or D- Derek Chisora. That's the. How can it not be that? How can it not be? Because one thing you have to be consistent about Tyson Fury is if we all agree he's the A side, if we all agree he does what he wants. Well, guess what? When a man who's the A-side, when a man who holds all the power ends up fighting a bum, that's never by chance, people. Yeah? Big A-side fighters don't ra- don't get forced into fighting bums. No, they only fight bums when they want to. We all agree no one forces Tyson Fury to do anything. Therefore, when he ends up fighting a bum, it's no one else's fault. Yeah? Fury could have easily... Dumb. He could have gone over and above to prove he really wants this fight. And I'm sorry, for me, he hasn't met that burden of proof. If anything, if I'm wrong, you man tell me. Show me what, what's that, what's Fury done to make this fight happen. Gave him credit for 60-40, fine. If that's real, great. Salute to you. That shows you're desperate for this fight. But since then, it's been nothing but trying to be awkward, I feel. I, I, I couldn't care less about, I couldn't care less about AJ. I'm, gl- I'm glad he ain't getting this fight for whatever reasons. But equally, it's like, why play around for? AJ's a, AJ's a completely unworthy schmuck. Leave him where he was. But don't use the AJ fight and then say, I feel this has been a whole plot. Use the AJ fight. Oh, it's a late notice now. I'll have to fight Char. That's what it's looking like this play was for. Oh, I want to fight AJ. Oh, no, only four weeks left. Got to fight Char now. That's what it's looking looking like. Let's not forget, people. From two days after Fury mentioned AJ, he was already posting Manuel Char. I did a video on that last week, and some goobers were telling me, "Why, B? This is old." 
Why be why you're posting Fury's old video? Now you know why. Because the question is, why shortly after Fury offered AJ6040, yeah, why? It's Fury messaging Manuel or posting Manuel Char. Why is he doing that for? That tells me this guy had a lot of things planned out we didn't know about, bottom line. A lot of things were going on in his head that we weren't privy to. What do you think is a coincidence? It's a coincidence that around the time Fury offered 60-40 to AJ. Bear in mind, Fury is supposed to be 100% committed to the AJ fight. So you think it's a coincidence? The man who's completely committed to the AJ fight, days after announcing his commitment to the AJ fight, is posting Manuel Char and hinting he wants to fight him. And now, here we are, the AJ fights fell through, and Manuel Char's back up again. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I just don't believe that. I don't believe it. I don't believe the, the big A side, Mr. He Does What He Wants, just ends up randomly in a Manuel Char fight. I don't believe that one for one minute. But listen, if Team Fury come out with evidence and receipts that Team AJ dropped the ball, I'm open to see it. And like I said at the start, truth be known, it's all... You don't know, you really don't know what to believe. All I can go based on is, is the rough estimation. Do I think Team AJ have flapped it? I can't believe that. There's someone in my soul who can't believe that. Not when, not looking at AJ's other prospects. He's got nowhere to go right now. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go whatsoever. This was a lifeline. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, and your ball will be back 100%.